Welcome back, my fishing friends, to another episode on the Rudy Riggs Fishing Channel. Today, we find ourselves on the Presumpscot River, one of the larger rivers in our state. We are right in Portland, Maine, and we are fishing this particular location today because directly across from us, if you guys can make that out, there's a little bridge you can see over there. That's Millbrook. Millbrook lets into the Presumpscot right here. So I'm thinking we might have some increased activity. It looks like we've got some depth. Uh, not too much runoff water yet, but stay tuned. This is just the start of our adventure today. We'll be getting out of my buddy's boat and going on to Lake Sebago to see if we can get some lake trout. So stick around guys. I'm super excited for what we've got in store for you today. And uh, thanks for watching. So guys, we're starting off uh, with a, the Meps Aglia spinner here. I don't know if you guys can make that out, but that is what we left off with in my last episode where I had a multi-species trout day. But that was a first for me guys, and what an awesome day it was. Um, that was just April 3rd, I believe, and today is April 4th. So we're sticking with the uh, Meps. We're seeing if it can produce here. And then we'll be using a totally different strategy up at Sebago Lake fishing in some very deep waters out there. Stay tuned for that, guys. We're just waiting for Jake to wake up. The guy just flew back in from Michigan last night and got in real late. What's good, brother? Uh, I am um, just fishing the Presumpscot River where Mill Brook leads into it, but I'm nearby you, so let me know when you want to link up. Yeah, no, like probably like tw in like 20 minutes here. I just woke up. Perfect. I'll take a few more casts and then uh, I'll probably start heading your way. You heard it. Jake is up. Let's get out of here. Live bait, 24-7. Looks like we're in the right spot. Let's see if they have anything. We are going to uh, come at these lake trout with a number of presentations today. Hopefully some shiners, which it looks like they've got. Let's get this going. This may turn out. These are nice. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This may turn out to be the most successful part of our fishing today. Hopefully not, but you never know. Um, we'll see. As I mentioned in my previous episode, we have an exciting update for you guys that Jake is going to be giving you. Uh, it affects me only because I'm always out here fishing with Jake. Uh, he's like my best friend, so really um, I'm just about as excited as he is, but I'll let him tell you guys more. Jake, what's the uh, surprise we got in store coming up this week? All right. For those of you new to the channel, maybe you've seen last year's videos where we just purchased this boat 2022 Lund WC14 it's all aluminum I do have a couple installed seats and things like that depth finder um, but we've outgrown it Jake and I and we've been looking for deals and I found a deal on a, a little bit of an upgrade to a 15 foot Lund with the finished interior so we'll be able to get out into those waters where it's a little more necessary to navigate around the boat. Right now, Jake and I have to take turns going from left to right in the boat. We have to step over the center console. Um, really, not, it's not a bad boat. It's pretty much unsinkable, but we need more space to yeah. sort of move around the boat and that'll help us really for That's safety dope. reasons and just for comfort. Uh, on the water. And fish ability. Yeah, baby. We're the fish get ability. Some big stripers on that, some fresh yep. water. Yep. I'll miss this boat. She's nice. Had the motor stolen off of it. A lot of memories, but anyways, that's it. We've got a lot of good times in this boat, guys. Uh, like Jake said, look back on the channel. You'll see some of our previous episodes that, where we've gotten out on this thing, whether it's trolling for striper, targeting largemouth, you name it. Um, we have even more planned for Jake's new boat with its new capabilities, so stay tuned, guys. Cannot wait. I'm super psyched for Jake. Jake is clearly psyched, and uh, let's go see if we can catch a laker today, okay? All right, 
guys. So, we have what appears to be a 100 foot shelf. So we're gonna fish that. We've got a plethora of rods, kind of like two St. Croix and two LLB trolling rods. We're gonna put some meat on the trolling rods with a shiner with a like two ounce pyramid weight at the bottom, hook above that, put the shiner on, drop that down. And then we're gonna also be hitting it with, check out uh, his YouTube channel, but I bought these from Bend It Fishing. Um, this is a one ounce style shad jig head with a six inch grub style body. And it glows, both the head and the body. So we're gonna hit it with my ultraviolet light give it uh, a little extra juice and then send it down along with the fresh bait. We'll see what works best or if anything works and we'll try some other locations too, but this is spot number one on Lake Sebago, guys. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so we're, we have a UV flashlight. This is used for curing fly ties. We're using it to boost our glow lures, so, um, we're gonna drop these down here and then we'll have four lures in the water. There's a bunch of other boats out there and we've got two over there, one behind us. This might be a good location, we'll see. It's gonna be loud and screaming before we know it. Guys, look at the presentation on our artificial lures. It's uh, really just perfect. Hopefully I don't drop this. Hopefully that brings something in. We're about to find out. What do you guys think will uh, hit first? Do you think it'll be the shiners going for the meat or going for the artificial? Throw it down in the comments. I want to find out what you guys think. This is what the guy said. He's like, yeah, you want to put it in there and kind of have it mimic our guppy. <laughs> oh, buddy. Dude. Look at him jumping all like, over the like, well, how about you send him a guppy? <laughs> yeah, for real. All right, guys. Same thing as when we were ice fishing. We're going to go right in front of that dorsal fin. Just above the spine. Boom. We're using kind yeah, of like, like an offset J hook. Yeah, same. Both of us got a nice little hook there. Let's send these guys down. Uh, okay. Oop, oh, dropped one. Yes. Really, right now? No, like earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. But they're shallower. They're not like 150 feet. They're like, yeah, they're like 100. Maybe, maybe even be less. We'll see.
we go. Again, guys, we're sitting just outside the mouth of the Songo Lock. We were marking some fish earlier, so that is a positive sign. Whereas our first time here, like a week and a half ago, um, we were not marking fish, so I'll take that. You can just tell with that two ounce, you can just tell when it hits bottom. Thank you, uh, Bendit Fishing, for the lures. Let's see if we can. Uh, thank you for a fish on the line. So we have a nice line of what appears to be bait fish going along the bottom right now of the lake. Um, so that's why we chose to stop here partially. We're also on a nice little bowl kind of pocket area in the lake as well so all right guys so tally so far we had jake had a big bite one bent his rod over um and then we just didn't get the hook set and it was off as soon as it came um right now we are sitting in about 50 feet of water and we are literally just smacking our rods the one bite we got today was on the shiners, so that's uh, interesting to note. Um, and that was in, we were shallow, right? We were like 45 feet of water, 40 feet of water maybe, when we got that bite. Right now, like I said, we're in 50 feet and we're just smacking our lures off the bottom of the lake. Um, that will help attract the fish a little bit. They can, their lateral lines pick up this disturbance in the water. They sense that and they'll come check it out. So that's the idea. Um, and they like to hang out deep. Um, their a nickname for lake trout is mud hens because they're just hanging out just above the mud where the, the bait is going along the bottom of the channels of the uh, river. So no mud hens today, but We'll continue to try for this. You can get these fish in the summer with trolling. We were psyched, so I would call today a success in the sense that this is really only our, we've only tried this really like twice now. And today we had actual, oh, we've got fish markers on as we speak, no way. All hope is not lost yet, guys. They're close by. That was crazy. I literally am getting ready to do an outro for you guys. And Jake's that quietly navigating back there like, oh, I saw you. <laughs> What's well, a bummer. It's like the same amount of layer. They're clearly with the same depth as our bait. You know, like, clearly don't want it at the moment. They're not like that hard to catch. No. Lake trout are like typically pretty easy to catch. Right, right. People bite anything. So like to be out here with meat and just floating in front of me and you're still not taking it, it's like, well, what are we doing around here? Right. There's gotta be something. No, yeah, this is not gonna be this hard. You can play around with that and catch them. And they're overstocked, they're over populated with people. Right, so it's not like we're dealing with a shortage of actual fish. I'm surprised that this isn't back over. Thank <laughs> you.